Hi, I'm Scott Bryant and Ricardo, and we're going to talk about the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's in, in Stylopedia and his training manuals and why they won't work for anybody as far as I'm concerned. Off you go. Um, yeah, well, that, it was my first forefront into working out and bodybuilding, I guess. Um, it's, it's, it was good in terms of I, I had no knowledge of working out or diet or anything like that. Yeah, so it yeah. gave me very good basics about, you know, just, just how to curl and how to bench and stuff like that. And knowing, like, I didn't know what, I, I really, to be honest, I didn't know what protein, carbs and, and fats were at the time. So even that was, good point, at, yeah. least, at least it gave me that. I think yeah. generally, if you're, unless you're really watching your diet, it's not really something you, God knows what protein is and that it comes from meat or anything like yeah, that. You don't yeah. really. Yeah, an average, like an average child, you know, young child at school, doesn't even know where a carrot comes from these yeah. days. So that's how, that's how funny it's got these days, you know. Uh, I 100% agree with you with the extent of looking from an exercise point of view. Yeah. These books are good for that. But you've got to remember the guy was taking steroids like Smarties. No, no. Come on. Right, so because he was taking genetics. Yeah, but, yeah, fuck off. Yeah, but because he was taking uh, steroids like Smarties, you know, really, yes, he was tunneling the food, but it's the steroids that were making him grow. Yeah. If you look at Dorian Yates and you look at Schwarzenegger and all them guys that all took gear, they're not. They're half the men they used to be. Mm -hmm. Because they're not. Because of the gear like is what enhances their physique. It wasn't the hardcore training. Yeah. It was the gear. So you've got to remember that. So I'm not against gear. If people want to take it, that's entirely up to them. But what I will say, if you want to take gear, go and see a doctor. Go and get assessed properly. Don't throw darts at the pills Cycle. that you're taking. Cycle, and, take it safely. Yeah, and definitely don't uh, buy your drugs in the back of the gym because you don't know where the fuck they come from. Mm -hmm. It's so like I used to work at a big nightclub and I used to chat to the regulars on a regular basis and they was all on ecstasy. And I would say to them, you know, if I got a sweet and dropped it on the floor and kicked it around everywhere, would you pick it up and put it in your mouth? No, you wouldn't. So why are people doing that constantly when they go clubbing? Or why are they doing that in the back of the gym, you know? it's. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, I think because, I guess, because they are illegal and you don't know where to go and get them safely, you get them from where you can. And I, I, I just find it weird that nowadays the, the prominent users are your average Joe going to the gym and it's all for aesthetics and it's no longer, like, I, I don't know what the statistics are, but I know that it's an overwhelming majority of users are now just your average Joes and not the athletes. There's less athletes taking it than there are the guys going. Correct that. I think there's more athletes taking it than ever before. No, there, there isn't ever before. But I think in terms of um, they, without making it okay, they have a reason to take it. They're doing it in order to for performance or whatever it is. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the prominent users are the guys because they want to look good in the club. They or they want their their t-shirts to be a certain size. And they're the ones buying it in the, you know, at the back of the gym and doing and abusing as well. Because coming from the background I did, which is pro wrestling, like the gas as they call it, is there. It's very prominent. Yeah. But these guys, they still they cycle. You know, they try and keep themselves as healthy as they can while still trying to get bigger. So it's not, you know, don't get me wrong. Back in the eighties, I know there was a there's there's a lot of wrestlers dying nowadays because... Dying wrestlers! Did you hear that? Because of um, 80s uh, steroid abuse and drug abuse as well, but it was, you know, they were taking steroids that were intended for horses and stuff like that, and they weren't cycling, it was just a continuous, like, you know, you'd have someone who was my height, 5'7 on a good day, and be just 250 pounds of solid muscle that can't be good for a man's heart. And I guess that's what's happening nowadays is the guys going to the gym and, take it and, and taking steroids and not doing it through a doctor or whatever. You don't really know what you're doing to your body. And if you're not... Exactly. Go and see elite professional. I think the, you know, the government should take a look at this. They should un, uh, decriminalize yeah. 
anabolic steroids, let people have the freedom to do what they want, but let them go to a good doctor where they can get them from. Yeah, I do. Everybody should have freedom of choice, you should know. A, poli all drugs. a politician yeah. can be in the Houses of Parliament snorting coke off the back of the, the toilet in the, in the toilet seat, you know, yeah. in the Houses of Commons. If they're doing it, and they're having a go at people in the gym that are doing it, I think that's totally yeah, but it's, unfair. It's, Wouldn't but you say that out there, who's listening or watching this video now? Yeah, definitely comments on that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But going back to Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, you know, it's like an encyclopedia, it's this big. Oh, it's thick, so yeah. what you've got to think about is that he's trying to sell you an unrealistic, an unrealistic dream. Mm -hmm. You know, you're never going to have 24 inch arms unless you were taking the juice that he was taking. So you've got to be really realistic with your training and, you know, eat clean food. If you look at uh, Eugene Sandow, Eugene Sandow yeah, had an amazing body, yeah. super strong, no drugs, no supplements, just hard, hard training, lifting weights. And I think that's the way the industry needs to go. And the good thing about Arnold now is that he's saying about the bodybuilders, they're looking at, you know, oh, it's ridiculous huge now. pot bellies. The gas yeah, they look like, like, they, like that. They look like, like they're pregnant yeah. fish on stage. You know, they've got like 26 inch arms, but uh, a two centimeter cock. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me, you know. They need to, they need to address and, and look at that, you know, I'm 44 years old, I've got 18 inch arms, which you can see there, which I've worked really, really hard for over 24 years. So it does work, but you've got to keep at it. And you've got to be realistic as well. There's, there's you say like, that's over years of time that you've gained yeah, the size of your arms. I think people, it's not so much Arnie's book, but muscle and fitness and stuff like that, it's this, this instant gratification thing that people think, you know, that you know, the six weeks to abs and stuff like that. It's bollocks. It, it's not it six is. weeks to abs. You're looking at. I found with clients a good year to change your body, to change your aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're on a really good diet, like the metabolic typing diet, your fat levels will come down, your muscle mass will go up, and you will feel and uh, you will feel and look different. But to really change muscle structure really takes time. Yeah. You'll see improvements within eight weeks, but if you do it constantly for a year, which many people don't, mm -hmm. that's when you see the real results. The bigger guys in the gym, the ones that are not on gear, are the ones that have been in the gym for years and years. They've yeah. not just done it for, you know, weekend warrior, weekend hero. Uh, I'm going out Friday night, so I've got to pump so up my chest. I don't have the blood pumping, exactly. You know, they're not in the gym four days a week or five days a week getting the body. Yeah. Now. Let's talk about overtraining. I was uh, on the bus and this muppet, I'm going to call him, <laughs> was talking about how he's in the gym six days a week and he's like doing seven, seven portions of food, you know, and he had uh, uh, five centimetre arms, you know, he didn't <laughs> even look like he'd ever worked out in his life. So obviously he's getting it totally wrong. Yeah. And this is what, you know, the magazines out there, that's the, the crap that they're putting out which is disillusioning the, uh, the young guys yeah. so they're not really getting the result. A good website you can go to that I can recommend is called Testosterone. Now that's a good website because that shows you uh, cycles of steroids if that's what you want to do, cycles of supplements if that's what you want to do, or you know how to get really into training properly. Unfortunately, these magazines that are on the shelves they're paying the big bodybuilders, you know, sponsorship money. But they're mostly sponsored by supplements as well, which is why every other page is three or four pages of the new yeah, protein so, powder. Yeah, so how much creatures. knowledge do you get out of one muscle mag magazine? How well, much knowledge is in there compared to advertising, would you say? Compared to advertising? Yeah. It's, it's probably 70% advertising and 30% that knowledge of 15% training, 15% diet and the rest is all All adverts. Yeah. So imagine, you, how much is it to buy? Two quid, three quid? Probably 3 99 now, probably four so quid. So 3 99 four quid, which would be... Buy it monthly and you get the same information, just kind of reworked. Yeah, uh, half, a, half a piece of steak, roughly, you're, bu you're, you're putting into buying that magazine for them to just sell you shit. In the Google age, why are you buying that magazine in the Google age? <laughs> You'll get the same information. Or the YouTube age. Yeah, exactly. Or the YouTube age. And I think this guy's got a, a valid point. In my day, like being a 44-year-old man, we didn't have 
YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have the internet at that time, or it was just very, very new. So I relied on, you know, Arnold's yeah, Encyclopedia, exactly. and I had a dream of being really hench and really fucking strong. But then I, I got deeper and deeper into, into bodybuilding, and then realized it was all drugs. And I looked long term thinking, I don't want to be 44 in a hospital bed dying. I've got a friend that has got a, his back, his lower back has gone. He's probably four stone heavier than what he's ever been in his life. He looks, to me, he doesn't look healthy anymore. So he's really lost it because of, you know, uh, drug taking in his early days yeah. for, that, for that vain look. Of course. And he was a marathon runner and he went up to, I think he went up to about 18 stone. So, uh, it's really important, you've got to think about longevity, not just about now. Mm. You've got to think about your whole career of looking great and looking good. So I try and look at people on the internet that are in their 50s and their 60s. And still. And still looking good. If you look at Liv Ringo, he's got a better, better body than Arnold. He might not have as much money Frank, in the bank. Frank Zane's always the guy. Yeah, and Frank Zane. Frank, Frank, Frank Zane was ridiculous. called the chemist. Yeah. He was called the chemist because well, he, he knew research. what drugs to take. Exactly. He did his research. Whereas everyone else were just popping pills, just yeah. for the sake of popping pills, and I think that, that that needs to stop. And the younger guys, like 18, 19, 20... Go hit the gym and eat well. That's what you should be doing at that age. If right? you need to take Viagra to have sex, <laughs> then there's something wrong with you at that, <laughs> at age. that age. I had wood every morning, I still have wood every like morning. <laughs> your testosterone is ridiculous at that age. Yeah, so... If your testosterone is already high and then you start to supplement your testosterone, it will drop. And when it drops, when you come off of it, you will lose muscle mass, you will lose strength, you will lose definition, and everyone will be going, oh, you come off your cycle then? <laughs> Have you had an injury? Exactly. Have you got cancer? Are and you that, dying? And that's the thing, it's the, another thing about that longevity. You don't want those continuous dips in how you look and how you feel just because you've had to come off your cycle or whatever it is. If you're just continuously striving to get bigger and stronger, but you're doing it clean, you never really lose what you've gained already. Exactly. You're exactly. never having like... If your know, diet's right, cycle. and you're working out regular, and you listen to your body like, mm. if I don't, if I feel too tired to train, I won't train. Did it, did it on Friday. Woke because up, first cause my body's yeah. telling me, yeah, my body don't do like, it. No, I need a rest but day. if it tells me, come on Scott, get down the gym, get pumping, I go and do it, and I get in there and I, I bust my balls, I go all the way, I, I don't punk out early, you know? yeah. I just keep going. And I think that that's the fundamentals that the younger guys are missing. And it's very unfortunate that the magazines are not saying that. The magazines are going, take this up. But that won't sell. Yeah, that's, that's, true. that's why the magazines aren't saying it, because this is, this is one magazine, this information, and then they're off the racks. Yeah, but if they, if they were like, put more natural bodybuilders in there, yeah. and if they had more guys in there that have, you know, really achieved something, like a guy that maybe your build and he's like deadlifting, you know, 160, 170, you know, we know a guy and he's deadlift, I think he's deadlifts 110, 120, you know, and he only weighs like, nine ten stone mm -hmm. and for me that's absolutely phenomenal you yeah. know to have that type of strength but obviously he's like 15 20 years younger than me uh, so you've got to remember that guys you know if you were spending four pound on a magazine and you would just enjoy reading it and you just want to be advertised to then the analogy is is find a good book on Amazon the like uh, beyond brawn this is a book that I used to build myself up and in Beyond Brawn, it explains about eating tons of amounts of food, lifting really heavy, as long as it doesn't hurt your joints and as long as it doesn't hurt your body. And your stomach in which the game size as well, because like um, I myself, when I was trying to pack on mass, um, would overeat to the point where I'd be in pain, and then training, would be training would be difficult because yeah. my stomach would be bloated or just feel uneasy and queasy and I still think people yeah consume a lot of food but also see when and how you're consuming it because it will affect the rest of the main Yeah so attitude. keep it keep it you know everyone should be keeping a training journal keeping a diet journal so then you can see where you're going wrong and obviously you can come and see a practitioner like me mm -hmm. that can really really help you but i'm not cheap folks i'm not cheap <laughs> he's not uh, so it's, it's really important to understand that 
building your body is much more than just lifting weights. Mm -hmm. You've got to lift correctly, you've got to rest, you've got to get to bed on time, you've got to eat organic food. And this has got to be right. You've got to say some prayers and stuff like that. And self-belief. And as I was uh, saying about Arnold, Arnold doesn't look as good as Lufa Ringo. There was a, a post on Facebook and Lufa Ringo looks amazing. Yeah. And he's 67. But then again, he, he, you know, he was a doctor as well, so maybe it's like with the Frank Zane thing where they call him the chemist. A Frogno, um, no, sorry, I'm thinking, of, Franco, I'm thinking of Franco, Franco right? Franco, Franco. No, yeah, no, Ferrigno yeah. yes, still looks in shape. He's got his own gym, and he, he yeah. trained Michael Jackson, and he broke his wrist, I read in the, <laughs> on the internet, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, that was before he died, obviously. Yeah. But... Nothing to do with his death. You know, so that's our little blog on Arnold Schwarzenegger book. So I would only recommend it if you was getting into it, you needed to see exercises. If, if but I wouldn't recommend it from a point of view of you're going to think you're going to get 30-inch thighs or 40-inch yeah. arms. It just ain't going to happen. And unless you're looking to really to be a bodybuilder and compete professionally, why do you, why do those numbers count to you? Like go for strength. Your body will follow it, and you'll gain some mass. Yes, it's good. one valid point is that if you're not training for strength, you will never get bigger. If you don't get stronger, you won't get bigger. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing bicep curls like that, doing half a rep, you're never going to get full bigger rotation. neither. You've got, you've got to do full range of movement, that. always full range in anything that you do. Okay, thanks folks. I hope you've enjoyed this blog today from Ricardo and me. Cheers, if you'd like to go to Ricardo's links at the bottom and my links, and if you'd like to have a chat at any time, he can talk to you about his pro wrestling and his movie career. Uh, so thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.